This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so so key topics that we are going to discuss today is uh, what is mean by WMS solution, warehouse management solutions, and uh, so what are the uh, key players available in the market? Uh, who's, who uh, actually, uh, what are the other softwares that we have in the market? And we'll understand what is WM and uh, so how the WM evaluated. So basically when it is introduced and how, uh, uh, what are the changes that have come in WM, all these things we'll discuss. And about and after that, we'll introduce the EWM functionality and we'll understand the landscape and deployment options. And finally, we'll understand what are the processes uh, available in EWM. So first thing, so what is mean by warehouse management? So why do we really need to use the warehouse management uh, software uh, in a business? So generally, uh, again, so if you are using any software, obviously there must be some uh, uh, simplification in the life, right? Let's say I have a business and uh, I would like to manage all my inventories or all my transactions or all my processes in a software. So in order to uh, do that, we need to choose a software. So for this warehouse management, uh, obviously we need to have some software available. So what this warehouse management solution does is, so uh, basically the activities, whatever we do in the warehouse, such as receiving the stock from suppliers or receiving the stock from uh, a manufacturing plant, all these activities, instead of capturing these activities in the paper, so we capture them in the system. And also what system does, system will not just really act as a data, I mean, just act, uh, will not act as a, a data entry. It also acts as a, a solutioning. So when you say solutioning, instead of you choose something, system will propose something. So we'll try to understand what is we choose something and what system will propose something. So basically WMS is a web-based solution which is designed to uh, meet the business requirements of all inventory handlings or inventory moments. So we can use the software for managing the, uh, managing the inventory and also to track the inventory and also record all uh, inventory moments within the warehouse uh, or which are coming into the warehouse or which are going out of the warehouse. So all this information we can capture using this warehouse management software. So what are the benefits of uh, warehouse management basically? So if you are using any uh, warehouse management software, so obviously uh, we don't really need to use the papers for uh, handling the transactions and all. So we can have paperless management. So in case if, if all transactions are executed earlier or all transactions are recorded in a paper or a book, so obviously they can be digitalized. Okay. And efficient monitoring. So when I say efficient monitoring, if I have to find out, let's let's assume uh, in your house, your house is of some 3000 square feet area. In 3000 square, square feet area, if you have to find out uh, which item is placed in which room or which place, obviously, I mean, if it is simple 3000 square feet area, we'll be able to identify it is available this uh, here in this room. But if it is three lakh square feet area and I'm handling, assume that uh, some thousand materials, I'll not be able to find out or I'll not be able to remember where these thousand materials are placed, okay? So using this WMS solution, so we will be able to find out out of this thousand material, if I have to find out a specific material, where that material is exactly available and what is the inventory of the material, how much, how many quantity or how much quantity is available. So that information we can find out using the uh, reports that we have. So which is nothing but, so the monitoring of uh, uh, inventory and everything we can use, we can do it from the uh, tool. And uh, obviously it will increase the productivity. So why, will, uh, why it will increase the productivity is because earlier you are doing transactions in the paper and now everything is digitalized. And uh, uh, obviously if I have to find, I mean, if I have to check the report or if, if, I, have, if I have to uh, perform certain transaction, system will guide me everything. A system will assist me to do these activities. So whatever the activity that you are doing earlier, it may take, uh, let's assume that it was taking some 30 minutes. Now that activity can be done in maybe half time or less than that also, depending on how we have set up the system. And all the softwares, whatever we are going to use in the market, I mean, whatever the uh, softwares that we have in the market, they are easy to use. 
you don't need to be a i mean as an end user i'm not speaking about the consult uh, cons, uh, consultant perspective as an end user we don't really need to have i mean they don't really need to have the uh, full technical information of the uh, tool it is just a web based or ga based uh, transactions it is like just uh, they just need to execute transactions they uh, i mean and using this software is very easy and all these transactions are seamless customizations i mean all this uh, uh, software is what we have as, uh, have seamless customization when i say seamless customization assume that you are building your own home versus buying a home so when you are building a home obviously you can build it as per your requirement or whatever as per your taste so you can modify you can design you can do everything as per your taste but when you are buying a home obviously it is like whatever is there you have to use it so all this wms software when you are implementing it right so you just buy the software and you implement it based on the uh, your requirement you can build it based on your requirement so which is nothing but you can customize it seamlessly so based on your requirement you can configure you can develop you can uh, 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 map your business processes without any uh, issues so all this wms software are highly customizable now what are the uh, key players that are available in the market who uh, i mean uh, who actually delivers wms software so we have multiple uh, i don't know in fact uh, uh, there may be some 200 plus uh, software is also available but uh, these are the softwares which i worked so when i say this i worked i mean obviously i what i did is i have uh, migrated all uh, clients from those softwares to sap so i cannot say that sap is the back that's why i put sap as our key player uh, again so this is just for illustration so we have multiple softwares available so in for taxi sofian uh, click reply hizam and we have arkel we have manhattan so we have uh, blue yanda software blue yanda wms solution we have fishbowl wms solutions so these are all different uh, players available in the market who actually gives wms solutions out of which sap has more market and uh, we also have manhattan which is also has more market so manhattan associates that also has a more market basically and uh, uh, again so why sap has more market is because if you look at the uh, erp solutions in any company so most of the companies are using erp solutions when i say erp solutions we have other modules also in sap uh, sd mm pp qm so the fi co there are different modules available in the market i mean in sap so using for you uh, for just for using wms solution we cannot really go with a different software and integrate our system with that software so that's why sap has more market in the system i mean in the uh, more market uh, in the uh, i mean more, it has captured the more market so yeah. sap is actually now it is around 40 to 40 42 to 43 percent share available in the wms solutions in the market for sap again there are different solutions available there are different softwares available in the market so but sap is something which is uh, which has more coverage now in sap within sap we have this is how wms solutions are evolved initially when r3 was released sap r3 was released there was no uh, wms solution and then sap introduced something called uh, uh, lean warehouse management solution so we'll try to understand all this terminology what is meant by lean and all and after that uh, uh, sap introduced uh, warehouse management and then it is a decentralized warehouse management and then we have extended warehouse management and within extended warehouse management we have different versions you can see all these versions supply chain management 5.0 7.0 to till uh, 9.6 and after that we have uh, embedded warehouse management embedded dwm so embedded dwm started from 1610 uh, and now we are in current uh, currently it is in 2020 version and also we have another deployment option which is uh, decentralized dwm on s4 so these are the options we have so let us try to understand what is meant by warehouse management solution or how we use sap warehouse management solution if you look at this this is a typical warehouse right uh, i mean if you have gone to a maybe walmart or uh, any stores right you would have seen some racks placed and rack numbers will be available 
and for each rack you'll see some barcode barcodes or some numbering will be available so just try to visualize like that so to, uh, to understand the warehouse management solutions and not just try to visualize with your walmart so here what we do is if you look at this here we have around some 20 racks but uh, if the warehouse is too big if it is let's say some three lakh square feet area or five lakh square feet area it can be more i mean we may have more racks also so we may have some instead of 20 racks we may have some 200 racks also so we need to identify uh, we need to first we need to split the uh, split all these racks into different different storage types so we have something called storage type so first thing what is mean by storage type so again if i take example of walmart or any supermarket so if you go to supermarket you can see different sections in one section you can see cosmetics in another section you can see soaps related items in other section you can see uh, gross, uh grocery related to uh, oils uh, dal and all these things will be available in other section you can see so uh, washing soaps uh, and washing powder all these things are available and in other section you can see cold storage related products and all so how these are organized like that so what we have to do is in our warehouse also we have to organize all our materials assume that i'm handling some thousand materials or thousand SKUs in a warehouse first we have to organize our, all the thousand SKUs in the warehouse saying that yes all these materials are finished goods materials these materials are semi-finished these materials are raw materials and i have some cold storage materials i have some packaging materials so we have to split the entire warehouse into multiple storage types depending on what kind of materials that you're handling so that is nothing but subdivision of store warehouse into storage type and after that what we do is again within the subdivision we may have multiple sections let's say i have finished goods materials so finished goods materials uh some finished goods materials are fast moving and some finished goods materials are slow moving when i say fast moving the demand for these materials are huge so i receive those materials and i ship those materials so which means materials are fast moving and some material finished goods only but some materials are slow moving i don't have much demand in the market but i still need to have those materials in my inventory so i'll dedicate some space in the warehouse uh, for those finished goods which are small uh, uh, medium moment or uh, low moments and that i'll divide into one section so that is nothing but your warehouse structure so here what we do is if you look at this rack here we have multiple racks rack number 34 35 33 32 something like this rack numbers available each rack we can consider as one storage type that is one possibility or these two racks 35 and 36 i can consider as one storage type and 35 i can consider as one section and 36 i can consider as another section so this is how we define this to uh warehouse structure in this system so we need to understand the physical structure of the warehouse and we have to define this again this can change from uh, one business to business client to client so uh, this can uh, vary from different business processes to different business processes in fact so that we can understand when we actually get into the real time that's a different story so here we have terminology called aisle so aisle is nothing but there's a gap between these two racks can see the rack rack number 35 and rack number 36 so the gap between these two racks is nothing but aisle so we generally identify what is the aisle of the uh, rack all this information we identify in the system and also you can see multiple levels so this is ground level and this is level one level two level three multiple levels available and finally we have bin numbers you can see something called bin so bin is nothing but you, you can see barcodes here so these are the barcodes so these barcodes are nothing but i mean there can be barcodes or there can be just numbers so this is where we are actually storing the inventory if you look at these boxes so these boxes are placed in the rack so ultimately so this is the entire rack this is the entire rack in the, this rack is sub subdivided into multiple bins so this is bin number one bin number two bin number three something like this so if you look at this level i mean this bay itself complete bay we have excuse me
sorry so uh, if you look at this bay so here we have multiple bins one two three and four five six seven eight nine nine bins available in this bay likewise depending on how many bays available in each rack you can you can create multiple bins or we can maintain multiple bins in the system so this is what is the warehouse structure is so first we we have to understand the warehouse and how we have to define uh, divide the entire warehouse into multiple storage types depending on type of materials that you're handling and then the warehouse is split into uh, multiple storage types and then further they are divided into multiple sections and then fi finally we divide them into multiple pins so like this and this information is something which we need to identify so what is that ultimately we are going to achieve with this right what is that we are going to ultimately achieve with this as i mentioned i have some three lakh square feet area i have 200 racks like this and now i'm receiving one material from the supplier so now the truck has come so when the truck comes to the warehouse so first we unload the stock and then after we unload it there could be certain activities such as quality inspection so i need to perform the quality inspection so if all my quality requirements are met then what i'll do is i'll move the stock from uh, unloading area to the location which is which is empty in the warehouse so how do i find out what is the empty space within the warehouse i have these many racks available these many bins available so how do i find out which is the empty space in the warehouse i'll not be able to find out right so system has to guide me system has to guide saying that this is the empty space available move the stock to that empty space and then complete your activity so that is something which is driven by the system and also now stock is placed in the uh, bin that is proposed by the system or that is uh, uh, driven by the system and my shift is over i'm leaving now and after that there is another person who is actually uh, working so that person also should be able to identify where that material is placed so in order to identify person don't need to roam around the warehouse and find out where the material is available so if we, we sh they should be able to check a report if, the ch if they're able to check the report they should be able to find out where the material is available so that is something which system will drive so it shows that material xyz is placed in this bin uh, rack number 36 and bin number two or bin number three so that information system will give so that is nothing but the reporting so with any wms solution not only just sap wm or ewm or whatever it may be any wms solution ultimately this is what we are going to achieve okay so any questions till now i'll take a pause I'll take it as no. Let me continue. So now, in EWM, if, I mean, if I directly go uh, about the process, uh, go into the process of EWM. So these are the main processes that we have in EWM. First is inbound process, and then we have uh, warehousing and storage, and then we have internal processes, outbound process, evaluation, planning, and monitoring. So these are the processes that we have. If I subdivide all these processes again, uh, in inbound process, we have these many processes, uh, like we have yard management. We'll explain, I'll explain about each and every option that we have here, we'll try to understand. So, we have inbound process inbound process subdivided into yard management uh, different processes yard management unloading uh, goods receipt quality inspection validated services deconsolidation uh, warehouse optimization exception handling there are different processes available in the inbound so we'll try to understand all these processes uh, how how we map this in the system and what what are the business requirements we generally get so when it go to when it uh, comes to storage so in storage, first we need to identify how the stock placement should work, how system should be able to find out the empty space, empty space, or whether we need to find out really empty space, or we need to find out the space which is already uh, occupied by some other material or some other batch. So that is that kind of uh, options we need to uh, develop in the system. So that is nothing but put away strategies, and uh, uh, we need to understand or we need to uh, define in the system whether i can club two materials in the same bin 
or two batches in the same bin or two expiry dates in the same bin two manufacturing dates in the same bin so all those things is about storage how you'd like to store the material and uh, we have something called handling units so in case if you're not uh, so handling units are nothing but so these boxes what you see here all these boxes will have some number ultimately the product whatever we are handling that will be inside this box so this box we call it as handling unit so this box will have some number so that number is something which we generate in the system and then uh, that number is uh, something which we can uh, actually track in our uh, reporting and also you can see barcodes so barcodes are nothing but barcodes are used for scanning purpose so obviously we don't really use any uh, computers mostly we don't really use any computers to perform transactions and all so we use some scanners to scan uh, to for performing transactions and all in the system so we'll understand this barcoding also so when it comes to other processes such as internal and all we have uh, bin to bin moments so for some reason i would like to move the stock from one bin to other bin there's some material placed in one bin and uh, i would like to move the stock from that bin to any other bin or I received some stock which is in quality inspection stock which is quality hold so now the quality has cleared the stock saying that yes this stock is meeting my quality requirement now i need to use it or i need to consume it so in order to consume it obviously we don't really consume it from the quality inspection stock so we need to convert the stock from quality inspection stock to a normal stock so which is nothing but posting change so those transactions and obviously all ad hoc adjustments so we have ad hoc adjustments such as let's say i would like to issue the stock to uh, scrapping so there is one batch there's one product one batch which is already expired i cannot keep expired stock in my warehouse i have to scrap it so these are all some ad hoc adjustments that we execute and also we have something called physical inventory so physical inventory is nothing but uh, let's say in the system uh one material 100 quantity available but physically there may be only 95 quantity okay so that 95 con the, the difference of five quantity so why the difference has occurred there could be any reason right so there are issues in the material handling there are issues in the shipping there are multiple uh ways i mean multiple uh, reasons uh, for which uh, you can see the uh, differences in the system so that differences we can handle through something called physical inventory so cycle count is another process which is uh, which is uh, of uh, physical inventory so that is also uh, we can understand and we also have something related to replenishment this also will understand and when it comes to outbound we have different processes in outbound and uh, also in evaluation and monitoring we have different processes so this is a high level i mean this is high level of uh, ewm but let us understand how these processes will work now if i have to receive the stock right so if i have to speak about the receiving process how the receiving will work is first i'll identify the need of a product or need of a material it can be a raw material or it can be a finished material finished goods material we need to identify the need of the material so that comes from the planning so once planning results are there then what we do is we we run the planning and based on the planning it can be a, a process of generating the purchase requisition assume that purchase requisition is generated or if i don't have the purchase requisition directly we can create the purchase order so purchase order is nothing but just saying that we are choosing a vendor we are choosing the supplier and then uh, you are ordering a material to the supplier so now the purchase order is created and it is released to the supplier what's what supplier does is supplier will send a confirmation which is nothing which we call it as uh, uh, order acknowledgement saying that yes i have received your order and i'll deliver that particular product uh, on the day that you are that you require your product or before that i can deliver so that information is nothing but we call it as order acknowledgement and vendor confirmations so order acknowledgement is nothing but just order is saying that uh, vendor is saying that i have received your order and after that confirmation is nothing but vendor confirmation is nothing but they'll send an information saying that i'm going to send a material or i've already shipped the material to your premises so using this information what we do is we can create something called inbound delivery inbound delivery we are going to receive the stock into the system 
or inside our warehouse. So we create inbound delivery. This inbound delivery will be handed over to EWM. And then we once the stock actually uh, arrives at our warehouse, we perform the goods receipt. And then once a the goods receipt is complete, now stock will be available in your system as well as in your premises. Once goods receipt is complete, stock is available in your system as well as your premises. After that, we need to identify where this material to be placed. I have a warehouse with 200 racks. So I need to identify where this material to be placed. In order to identify where this material to be placed, we create something called warehouse task. And if I have assumed that I have multiple materials, so multiple tasks will be created. All this task system will club into something called order, warehouse order. So that warehouse order, we can print and we can hand it over to an operator for completing their activities, saying that you move the stock from this location to this location. So that information will be available in the warehouse task and warehouse order. Now, once activity is complete, I have to update in the system saying that my activity is complete. That is nothing but confirmation of warehouse task and warehouse order. So this is a process flow of receiving. So in this, to transfer the data between, I mean, to transfer the data to EWM and also to receive the data from EWM, we use a communication method called QRFC, queued remote function call. So this is a communication method that we gen, uh, that generally uh, basis consultant will, gen, uh, will set up. QRFC is a communication method, right? And if it is outbound, when it's outbound, if it is shipping, so. In shipping, how the process will be? First, you receive an order from the customer saying that I need uh, maybe this material or this group of materials. I receive an order from the customer. So first, what I'll do, I'll check. I mean, based on my planning, based on the check and all availability check and all, system propose, proposes that yes, these are the materials available, and uh, these materials I can deliver on a so and so date. So that is nothing but your planning or nothing but your schedule. So once schedule is updated, so what we do? Whenever we need to really need to uh, issue the stock to the customer as per the scheduled date, we create something called delivery. We create something called delivery. Now that delivery will hand it over to EWM and then we execute it. So execution is nothing but. So in the warehouse, first I need to find out I have these materials or where are these materials placed? So first find out where are these materials available. For that, again, we create a warehouse task and warehouse order and then that warehouse task and warehouse order will hand it over to an operator. Operator will go pick materials and then move it to one location where we actually need to start our loading activities. And then once stock available at that location where loading activities will take care, then we confirm the activity. Then we confirm the activity. So that is nothing but confirmation of warehouse task and warehouse order. That is nothing but confirmation of warehouse task and warehouse order. Once we complete the loading and all, then we perform the goods issue, so which is nothing but shipping out the stock. Okay, shipping out the stock. So this is outbound flow. So this looks completely high level. So you'll not be able to understand this much. But if you, if you try to compare this with uh, pictures, what we have, so you'll be able to understand it properly. Now, how the receiving will work? How the receiving will work? So receiving will work like this. First, a truck comes in, truck will report at the checkpoint. So first step, truck will report at the checkpoint. Okay, so this is a checkpoint. And after that, we say that in case if there are empty doors available, you can see multiple doors available in a warehouse, the possibility there could be a single door or there could be multiple doors also. Depending on availability of door, I can directly re uh, redirect the vehicle to go to a particular door. If empty doors are not available, then what I need to do, I need to have a space in my warehouse or outside my warehouse to park my vehicles. 
to park my vehicles, I need to have some space. So that is nothing but yard. We call it as yard. And how this vehicle movements within yard are managed, or these are managed by a concept called yard management, which I was explaining earlier, or which I was showing earlier in the topics. So now, uh, vehicle is available in the yard or parking space. After that, uh, maybe after some half an hour, now the door became free. So what I'll do is I'll redirect the vehicle to go to a door and then dock at the door, which is nothing but park at the door. Now vehicle is parked at the door. So what are the activities that we need to do next? So we need to start unloading. So we need to start unloading. So I'll unload the stock from the truck and then I'll place in one location. And then what I'll do is I'll perform something called goods receipt in the system. So goods receipt is nothing but so once stock is unloaded and placed in our in my warehouse, I need to update that information in the system. Otherwise, what will happen? If I don't update that in the information in the system, it is still shows it, sh it still shows as stock is not there in your uh, warehouse. That's why I need to complete my receiving process in the system. So once I complete my receiving process or goods receive process in the system, after that there could be different activities. So different activities are maybe I need to label or I need to perform repacking. Let's say I'm receiving one bigger box. Uh, I mean, in one big box, I have multiple items. Uh, but what I wanted to do is I want to break that big box into smaller boxes. So individual items, I want to place individual boxes. So for that, I'll do the repacking and then I'll, I'll do the relabeling. So those activities I'll perform. Or there may be a requirement of uh, quality inspection. So materials which I'm receiving from the supplier, I may need to perform the quality inspection. I'll perform the quality inspection. Once quality inspection is performed, there may be a requirement of uh, performing some special activities, any special activities. So all those activities I'll perform. And finally, I'll move the stock to the rack. I'll find out, I mean, system will propose. So there is an empty rack and then uh, that uh, you place the stock in that empty rack. So that information system will propose. Finally, operator will move the stock from one location to other location. So if you look at this process, so we are following each and every uh, step or every process that is followed in the uh, physical warehouse, right? That we are trying to capture in the system. If you are from WM background, we don't have this kind of options in the uh, WM. So you can't do these activities, step-by-step -step activities. It's just like in case, uh, in case if you have, uh, let's say you need to perform unloading, you cannot capture the unloading activity. Let's say if you have repacking related activities, you cannot perform repacking related activities. When I say repacking, like system cannot propose saying that this material is due for repacking, move to a location where repacking is done. So that kind of proposal system will not be able to do it or uh, there could be some validated services. So when I say validated services, you are receiving, assume that uh, a material uh, which is subjected to climatic conditions. Now, I don't want the material to be damaged if I place the material in my warehouse. So that's why I want to apply some ingredients to the material whenever I receive it. So that is nothing but a validated services. Or if you're working in apparel industry, assume that uh, you're buying a t-shirt for uh, $10, but if you, you'd like to sell it for $15, so we need to relabel it. So the relabeling activity is an additional activity for us. So that also you can cap capture as a validated services. So depending on the material that you're receiving, we can set up the process in such a way, this material due for quality inspection, move it to separate location. This material is due for uh, repacking, do move it to separate location. This material is due for validated services, move it to separate location. All this information system will drive all this information system will drive. So that is a main difference between any other WMS solutions available in, the, if available in the market and EWM. Other WMS solution will focus mostly on the storage, whereas EWM will focus mostly on the process along with storage. Ultimately, storage is something which we need to achieve, uh, which we need to achieve. But before that, we, know, we also need to follow the process. So that is what we are going to achieve with EWM. So that's why we call it as process oriented storage control. Uh, I'll take a pause. Any questions?
I do have a question. Yeah, yeah. So here uh, in WM we have integrated and non-integrated customers, right? Mm -hmm. So on the same way in EWM, uh, how will you be handling the integrator and non-integrator? Is it through e EDI or is there something else? It is through EDI only. Through EDI. So for everywhere like media is something which we need to use. If you have a, something related to integration now. So uh, uh, will you be uh, will you be uh, will be covering that area also EDI how to? No, in the training content, I'm not covering the EDI part for EDI. Okay. Now, what what about the R of transactions in? So uh, again, we have uh, not discussed much about that, but uh, yes, uh, in WM also you have RF transaction, but uh, in standard itself we have around 40 to 50 transactions which we have available, but we need to have more transactions with RF. So okay. yeah. RF, RF area will be also covered, right? During the training. Right. Yes, yes. Okay. So this is about the process oriented storage control. Again, if I speak about the, this is a receiving process. If I just reverse it, so this will be a shipping process. So how the shipping process will work? Again, it is same. What we do first, we have to identify where the stock is available and then uh, pick the stock from that location or from the track and then move it to a packing area and complete your packing related activities because without packing, we don't really uh, issue the stock to any customer. Correct. So it's not just like pick the middle and throw it on the truck, right? So we perform packing. So complete the packing and complete the labeling related activities and then uh, start your uh, start your uh, truck to go outside or let your truck to go outside. So these are the activities that we do. So in outbound process also, we have multiple steps. First, we pick the stock and then we perform the packing and then we move the stock to a location where we stage it before the truck comes in and then we ask the vehicle to go outside. So these are these are the processes available in outbound also. So again, as I mentioned, other WMS softwares will focus on the storage and receiving shipping related activities, whereas EWM focuses more on processes. And we have some special processes. So we have a special process called kitting. Assume that you are in a, uh, I mean, if you are in automotive industry, this is mostly used uh, method uh, for, especially for spare parts and all. So if I take a small example, uh, let's say I would like to open the car engine. When I say I, I mean, uh, it's obviously the mechanic. So mechanic would need to repair the car engine. If mechanic has to repair the car engine, then obviously there, may, there must be some dependent components also that they need to replace, correct? So let's say I have to replace the piston. If I have to replace the piston, it is not just the piston that I'm replacing. So we have to replace the ga gaskets, oil seals. There could be some nuts and bolts we have to replace. There are many things that we need to replace. So which means some products are interdependent or some materials are interdependent. So if I'm ordering a material, along with that, I need to order other material also, right? So basically what happens is as a customer, let's say when you're ordering uh, online uh, in an, any e-commerce site, say for example, you're ordering a computer or laptop. So when you're ordering a laptop, you may order saying that, I mean, if you if you wish to buy, you may order, uh, let's say a mouse, you may order uh, uh, any other components, let's say pen drive uh, or any other, let's say some three, four components you would like to buy along with laptop. So what generally business does is, so they'll kit them together. When I say get them together, they'll pack them together and then ship to the customer. They'll pack them together and then uh, ship to the customer. So based on the customer requirement, what we do is we generate kits. We generate kit kits. So that is nothing but kit to order. Kit to order based on the customer requirement. And we have other, so which is nothing but kit to stock. So kit to stock is nothing but, let's say, I have planned some promotional offers. A simple example is if you go to supermarkets, you would have seen a promotional offer saying that if you buy three, a fourth one is free. So the four materials are clubbed together. So 
that is something which is a promotional offer which i planned i know how i mean i'm, I'm planning saying that i would like to sell some thousand kits you know maybe some 10 days time if i have to sell thousand kits in 10 days time what i need to do is based on my forecast first i'll generate kits and i'll store in my inventory i'll plan and store in my inventory after generating kits i'll store in my inventory then what i can do as soon as a customer requirement comes then i can directly issue this uh, kit to a customer but whereas in case of kit to order it is like based on the customer order whenever i receive the order from the customer that is when actually i start performing the kitting related activities but if i already know that all these materials always delivered together why do i need to wait for the customer order i can generate a kit and store in my inventory so these processes can be uh, uh, can be implemented in ewm directly in ewm when i say ewm directly in ewm generally you can compare this with the uh, make to order and make to stock scenario in case if you are from pp background or if you know uh, something related to uh, production process in make to order what happens whenever customer orders that's when we actually start producing it and uh, uh, that is make to order in, in case of make to stock based on the forecast we produce something and then we store in our warehouse and then we ship it to the customer that is make to stock but here we don't really have a manufacturing facility in this example we don't really have a manufacturing facility what i'm doing is i already have some inventory in my warehouse based on the customer requirement i'll generate a kit and then i'll issue to the customer or based on the forecast i'll generate kit and store in my inventory and whenever there is a customer requirement that's when i'll actually ship the stock to the customer so these are kit to order and kit to stocks so which is a process in ewm so we can integrate this with uh, uh, pp also production planning also in case we have a special requirements and we have a process called cross docking so cross docking is nothing but especially uh, uh, ewm triggered cross docking so when it, so generally we have other cross docking processes also we have something called transportation cross docking uh, like uh, in case if you are uh, in a supply chain let's say for example you have some three warehouses in the first warehouse when you loaded the stock uh, it is only a partial truck so i don't want to uh, uh, waste the truck utilization so what i would like to do is i would like to load some more stock from the other warehouse which is in my uh, transportation lane right so what i'll do is i can uh, ask the vehicle to go to a warehouse number to load the stock and then uh, go to the customer or go to customers that's how transportation cross docking will work so for this we need to have an integration with the transportation management and all these things that's a different story but we have something called ewm triggered opportunities to cross docking so basically assume that you're receiving a material from the uh, some supplier so i'm receiving a material uh, let's say 100 quantity from the supplier but before i receive the material from the supplier i already have a order which is ready made available from the customer i need to deliver this material to the customer in that case what i need to do i don't really need to receive the material move it to the stock or move it to the bin and then again pick it from here and then ship it to the customer that activity is not really needed if there is any requirement for this material what I'm, I'm whatever i'm going to receive if there is any requirement what i can do is i can directly unload from the on a truck and load it in the other truck so that is nothing but cross docking so you are receiving it in the receiving area and you are directly moving it to the shipping area to load it to the uh, to issue to the customer so this information what uh, it is completely driven by ewm ewm what system will do is it will validate what are my receivings or what are the uh, what are the stocks that i'm going to receive and what are my requirements so based on that system will uh, perform the cross docking on its own obviously we need to set up some uh, configuration and some data uh, to work with this uh, cross docking process so this is completely executed in ewm so here you are not really wasting the time for uh, moving the stock to this uh, uh, storage and then pick the stock from the storage and then again loading uh, loading on the truck so that activity is not needed so in this assume that you are receiving 100 you have a requirement of 100 you can directly issue to the customer but if you have a requirement only of only 50 you can split that uh, box and you can move 50 quantity to the warehouse storage and 50 quantity to the customer or outbound truck that's how it can work and if you have a more requirement then obviously what system will do 
it pick the stock it will pick the stock from the uh, receiving area partial quantity it will pick the stock from receiving area and partial quantity it picks from the uh, storage that's how cross docking will work okay and this is what we are discussing about rf right so mobility so mobility is something which is really important because uh, i cannot keep on let's say if i have to complete certain transaction in the system i cannot go go back to it office, IT office and then uh, enter some information in the system right as an operator if i'm performing certain transaction or certain activity in the warehouse i should be able to update that information in the system or uh, real time if i don't update that information real time in the system then obviously that would lead to many inconsistencies so that's why we need to have a mobility so ewm supports rf and scanners so basically if you look at this picture here uh, so we have a barcode on the box so what i can what as an operator i'll uh, utilize the scanner and i'll scan the barcode basically there will be some uh, some some places where we can scan, uh, scan and some places where we need to enter some data so i'll be able to enter the data and then complete my activities using these scanners and all and also we have something related to resource management so this uh, the forklift what you see here this i can consider as a resource so the main difference between wm and ewm in case if you are from wm background so in wm we don't have a functionality of uh, resource management and all assume if i take an example i have a high rack i mean there is a rack which is about uh, some 10 meters height or 10 feet height 10 meters is huge if i take 10 feet height 10 feet height uh, 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 rack is there now i need to move the stock i mean there is a uh, stock which is incoming i need to move the stock to the uh, high rack high rack which is at 10 meters height if i have to move it to 10 meters height i should have a forklift so this is a forklift which can reach till 10 meters height right so assume stock is in the receiving area i pick the stock into the resource and then when i uh, go to the uh, bin i try to place the stock in the 10 meters height but then i realize that my res my resource which i'm using is not capable of reaching the till 10 meters height then what i need to do again go back to the initial position take a different resource move the stock to a different resource again go back to the bin and then try to place the stock so this kind of hiccups right this kind of activities uh, generally if you if you are keeping uh, keep on doing this activities multiple times obviously you are uh, wasting the time in the warehouse for performing transactions and all so what ewm does is we maintain the physical layout and we maintain the physical restrictions of uh, all bins and we assign uh, what kind of resources that we can use we don't really assign what which forklift it is but we we assign what kind of resources that we can use to perform certain activities in some areas so that information we maintain in the system using this when you're trying to select a resource and if the resource is not intended for performing certain activities in that area then system will throw an error saying that this is not the right resource <coughs> sorry this is not the right resource that you have to use so that kind of restriction is available in ewm which is not available in any other WMS systems. So using this both options, mobility and resource management, we can complete our, our transactions without using a computer really, right? As an operator, we don't really use a, we don't really need to use a computer. I can complete these activities from uh, using this uh, uh, scanners itself. And if I want to check any reports, basically if I want to see the stock information, if I want to see the warehouse task information, all this information I can check from the scanner itself. So that is the flexibility of the mobile devices. Okay. And finally, reporting. So reporting is something which is uh, uh, needed for any tool, right? So efficient reporting or efficient transaction process is something which is really important. So obviously for checking reports, we use different transactions and different modules. So let's say if I have to check purchase orders, I'll use different transaction. If I have to check sales orders, I use a different transaction. And uh, if I have to check inbound deliveries, different transaction, outbound deliveries, different transaction, stock, different transactions. I mean, in SAP, different, different modules will have different, different transactions. And if I have to check uh, report, I have to use different uh, reports. Whereas in EWM, we don't have many reporting tools. So we have centralized reporting tool called monitoring, warehouse monitor. 
So in the warehouse monitor, we can check everything. So what all we can check? We can check how many deliveries are pending. How many deliveries are pending for receipt? How many deliveries are pending for issues? So what is the inventory of the warehouse? How much, what is the utilization, percent of the, utilization percentage of the warehouse? And how many tasks are overdue? And what is the performance of the labor? Let's say if I consider, I mean, if I plan uh, to complete this activity in 15 minutes, but if the uh, activity is not den, done in 15 minutes, there is something really wrong. So that, be, that also we can check. So all this reporting, we can check in something called centralized reporting tool. So which is nothing but warehouse monitor. We don't really need to remember many transactions in EW. It is just with simple monitor, we can check many things. We can perform transactions also using monitor. So that is advantage of reporting in EW. And obviously, if you need to check the KPI, key performance index and all. So we have some analytical theory apps. Uh, I mean, only one, in fact, uh, one analytical theory app available, uh, warehouse KPI, where you can check all this information in a graphical format. So that information we can check. And there are some other analytical apps available for different transactions. So uh, that also we can use for our uh, uh, reporting purpose and all for different reportings. But if you are using web-based or GUI-based reporting, it is only one transaction that is nothing but centralized reporting tool where you can check everything, inbound deliveries, outbound deliveries, stock, uh, warehouse utilization, alerts, everything you can check from the monitor itself. Any questions? So I'm new to this uh, warehouse management, but uh, so so can you uh, please explain why it is called extended warehouse management? Right, I'm there now. I'm going to explain about it. So this is what I was saying, right? This is how EWM uh, is evaluated right from the beginning. So as I mentioned earlier, when SAP R3 was there, there was no uh, WMS system. I mean, there's no warehouse management in SAP. And uh, initially it started with the lean warehouse management. So lean warehouse management is nothing but this entire warehouse, what you see here, this entire warehouse is considered as one bin, one bin. Which means if I have to check the report, system shows that it is there in this bin. I don't, I'll not have a clarity again, which rack, which uh, uh, stack, which level, all this information I'll not be able to find out with that lean warehouse management. But just to in, uh, introduce a functionality, SAP has introduced a lean warehouse management. Entire warehouse is considered as one bin. That is lean warehouse management. And after that, SAP has introduced normal WM, SAP WM, warehouse management, so which means to track the inventory, to track the uh, stock placement, to start, track the stock removal and all, all these activities, SAP has introduced a functionality of warehouse management. Now, there is something called decentralized warehouse management, which is, which is again warehouse management only. But what we do is, instead of keeping a normal SAP transactions and other tran uh, warehouse transactions in the same server, uh, we can divide only warehouse transactions into a different server. When I say, for example, you, are, uh, you have a computer or you have a laptop. In the laptop, uh, let's say, for example, you have some uh, uh, 600 GB data. So if you have 600 GB data in the laptop, obviously uh, your laptop will become slow. So what we try to do is we, st we try to store, the, some, uh, store some of the uh, data into an external hard drive. So when you store the data into external hard drive, it is like your system will become uh, fast. Now. Here we have in SAP also, we have something called planning, uh, planning system and execution system. Warehouse management is an execution system. Why I'm saying that is simply, if I take another example, if you go to any, any let's say, uh, for example, any electronic shop, you'd like to buy a refrigerator. If you want to buy a refrigerator, then what we do? So we go to the electronic shop, we choose the model, and then we pay the bill, and then we come home, so it's like uh, the refrigerator will be delivered after a day or two, the de depending on the I mean, uh, shipping address and all this. That's a different story. So now, so this electronic sh shop is a planning, a planning and they'll have a warehouse where the execution will happen, actual execution will happen. 
So now for, for us in SAP, the planning system is nothing but I create purchase order using module called MM. I create sale order using module called SD. I perform production related activities using module called PP. And uh, I perform all my uh, financial transactions using fi finance and controlling FINC. So this is all my planning system. Actual execution, actual receiving, actual shipping, all these activities are done uh, in a system called warehouse management system. So if I'm using this deployment option, normal SAP or a WM deployment option, my planning and execution both are clubbed together. In single instance, planning system and execution system both are there. But whereas if I want to keep my planning system and execution system separately, then I can use this option of decentralized warehouse management. This is one deployment option which is introduced by SAP. So functionality wise, whatever you have here, this same functionality is available here also. In normal warehouse management and decentralized warehouse management, functionalities are same. Only thing is you are using two different instances and the communicate, we need to set up the communication between these two instances. So that is warehouse management. So this was this is a traditional warehouse management solution which is available. After that, what SAP did is they've introduced a new module called extended warehouse management. So extended warehouse management is nothing but so it is not just an extension of what what we have here. I mean, it is not just extension of W. This is a completely a different module, extended warehouse management with different functionalities. Obviously, the core concept of receiving, shipping, storage will remain, but with additional functionalities such as I was explaining right process oriented storage control so processes like kitting validated services cross docking so by introducing all these functionalities sap has released a different module called ewm extended warehouse management so this module is not re not released recently it is there in the market since 2006 this ewm is there in the market uh, since 2006 but uh, since I'm getting almost all functionality, I'm, I won't say almost, but I'm getting some functionalities related to EWM and WM. Clients were using this WM, but now what SAP did is, SAP is forcing everybody to move towards EWM. They're going to stop the support for WM. Again, the roadmap is that initially they said by 2022, we'll stop the support and then they change it to 2025. They change it to 2027. And there's no specific timeline as such saying that when it is when the support will be uh, stopped. So now SAP is focused towards uh, EWM and if uh, SAP pushing all clients to go to EWM implementation. And in EWM, we have these many versions. So they started with 5.0 initially. So this was EWM was part of a different server. It was part of a different server. There's something called SCM, supply chain management server. So this was part of SCM server. In SCM server, we have these many modules. Uh, sorry, these many uh, versions. So these many versions are there. So what I need to do if I have to implement EWM, then again, I have to implement ERP as a separate server. That means planning system separate and execution system separate. So even though I have a requirement of going for EWM implementation, earlier clients were hesitant to go with EWM because I'm, they have to implement two servers. So that's why what SAP did is they've changed the strategy. They've changed the strategy and they've released a version called embedded EWM embedded ewm embedded ewm is nothing but functional device more or less functionalities will remain same but this is on s4 hana we have a uh, we have a uh, i mean new version called s4 hana earlier we were, we were using ecc now we have s4 hana so all clients who are on sap ecc they are trying to migrate to s4 hana and when they are migrating to s4 hana so instead of going for a wm implementation clients are trying to implement ewm only extended warehouse management that to embedded version, mostly embedded version. Again, here also we may have a requirement saying that I don't want to club my planning system and execution system together. I want to keep them separate. Then we have a separate option which is introduced, decentralized EWM on S4 HANA, which means I can use S4 HANA itself, but in one instance, I can use all other planning modules. In other instance, I can use the execution system, which is nothing but EWM. So that is a deployment option which we have uh, recently. There are implementations going on here also in this version also, but uh, more or less core concept will remain same. I won't say 100%, but in these three deployment options, what you see here, core concept will remain same. There are slight differences, but uh, core concept will remain same.
Any questions? Right. So that's why, as I mentioned, the, the, this decentralized GWM, which is nothing but this, this one and uh, this one, both are almost same. So this picture depicts that. It is only the server which we are using different. Earlier, we were using a CM server. Now, instead of using a CM server, we are using a Svorhana server. That's all. That's the difference. Core concept will remain same almost. And in our training, we are going to use 2020 version, the latest version, 2020. Uh, I have one quick question. So in case of decentralized, how is the communication done between the uh, ERP and the EWM system? We have two options. One is uh, we can use something called QRFC, Cured Remote Function Call, and we can use TRFCs also. But uh, mostly used method in the market is QRFC. So in case if you are familiar with APO, uh, to transfer the data between ERP system and APO system, we use QRFC. So it's just like IDOC. Uh, let's say if you wanted to connect with your partner system, gen we generate an IDOC and uh, information we pass through IDOC, right? So QRFC yeah. is also like a IDOC only. So the information, whatever is there in the delivery or any data, that will be that uh, system will generate a queue and it will transfer it to uh, partner system, which is S EWM system. Thank you. So this is a background of EWM. Uh, again, if we go into each and every topic, what we what I have written here, it will take uh, each topic will take two two hours, three hours, something like that. So high level, this is what is EWM is all about. So any questions from anyone? If not, finally, this is my <coughs> suggestion. So if you have to learn something, right? So we have to practice. Practice is important. Without practice, we'll not get anything. So uh, generally, we spend uh, uh, one, one and a half hour time daily uh, in the training. And you need to practice at least one and a half hour, two hours for learning the tool. So without practice, just hearing to the uh, classes will not help you. So if no questions, I think that's all from my so, side. Uh, just uh, yeah. one question about the class. So this class, mm -hmm. uh, what time, what, are, what will be the timings and uh, how about the license for S4 HANA or something? How so we, we have the server. We have the server for practice. Uh, I mean, whatever the server that I'm going to use for uh, training, right? Same server you get. Uh, you'll get the access in that server only. So that uh, will take care. There is not an issue. And timings, uh, timing will be uh, 8 p.m. CST. Monday to Friday. And how long will be the training, like duration of the training? It will, it will be eight weeks. Uh, well, I have a quick question. Uh, so it will be all five days, like from Monday to Friday? Right. Uh, OK. Since okay. when we are starting this one? Uh, we need to plan based on the availability, based on the availability of participants. 
so um, basically i need to get the confirmation so once everybody confirm or how many the, the, then i can plan when we can start it so if by any chance we miss the class will the recording be available to us of that class right uh, every session will be recorded in fact now i'm recording the session so okay. all sessions will be recorded and these will be uh, shared in the drive great Uh, mm -hmm. Can I get the timing? 8 p.m. to 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Sometimes it may spill over to 9:15 to 9:20 something like that. One one hour 15 minutes, one hour 20 minutes. It depends on the topic. So it is minimum one hour, maximum one and a half hour. Okay. And how, how long it will go? Eight eight weeks. Eight weeks. Subject is huge, so eight weeks. In fact, this eight weeks, what I'll cover is uh, what is needed for the uh, generic market. When I say generic market, obviously there are some topics which are specific to some of some clients, it may not be used in uh, all clients, but uh, mostly whatever needed for the uh, market, right? To get into this subject or to go for any implementation, that is something which I'll cover. In fact, if I have to cover whatever I I know in EWM, right? So the I have, I have a question about the format of that uh, training. So will it be like you know this presentation based and simultaneously we have to work on that uh, uh, that server or or the interface that you are going to give us or or how how is it going to work? See, we have will have process flows uh, for every uh, every process will have a process flow, and after that we execute the uh, we configure in the system and we'll test in the system to, to see the test result. Whatever we configured is working fine or not. We prepare some use cases, so uh, those use cases will implement in the system and then we'll test it and see how what is the result. That is how the format will be. Yeah, so so that will happen. So that 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 uh, that test case uh, is. That is going to happen during the training, or we have to do it separately outside the class. It's, it's during the training. It's during oh. the training, and also I'll keep okay. the assignments. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, will we be completing one end to end implementation, EW, during the training? One uh, confident. I mean, one guarantee that I can give you is if you are follow following the entire. Uh, I mean, all the topics that I'm covering, right? You can complete one implementation. So but during, again, this is important. This slide is important. Yeah, so the has a practice. Uh, do we don't be having a, that like a section like for practicing creating a point to end? No, we'll not be having a separate session for in the uh, I mean for practice, but it is like I'll explain something. I'll I'll configure something and I'll test something. So I would recommend you to practice that. And again, as I said, uh, I'll be giving some assignments. So you need to configure something for that. So if, uh, if you are stuck, obviously I'm there to help you. That's how it would be. Okay. And will you be covering that uh, if there is any queues happen, like uh, there is a issue with the flowing from ERP to EWM system. So how to fix right. it? All those things will be yeah. covered. Yes. Fine then, so that's all from my side. So you can uh, uh, reply to me uh, in case if you have any questions, you have my mail ID. Oh, 
Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks, nice. Thanks. So I've just uh, put my melody here. Yeah, uh, thanks, Narsimha. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Narsimha. Thank you, Narsimha. Thank you, Narsimha.